Hi, and welcome along to AFTV. We have got a special for you today, um, a transfer daily extra, where we're going to be getting a rundown on the player that a lot of us are getting really excited about at Arsenal, and his name is Hossim Awa. Now, to tell us who this person really is, I thought I'd bring in an expert, um, an expert on French football, which, of course, is Adam White, who... Um, works brilliantly for Get French Football News and uh, is a guy that watches French football and studies French football week in, week out. Now, we're all getting very excited about Hossi Mawa, as I've learned to pronounce since uh, looking on Get French's Twitter and they broke down their pronunciation. And um, we've seen him in the Champions League mainly. I I'd say most of the Arsenal fans, that's where we've seen him those last few games after the lockdown in the Champions League where he played really, really well. But obviously, I wanted to sort of delve a bit deeper and really find out, you know, do a bit of a scouting mission to find out if this guy would be right for Arsenal. You know what I mean? Because it's all very well where you see the videos or, you know, a lot of times you've got players, you've got your little YouTube videos and they look great. And then they turn up and you think, oh, this guy, he just... <laughs> Who is it? It's not the same. He, he weren't ready for us. We got Adam, and um, thank you very much for coming on, Adam. And, and um, yeah, we wanted to get a rundown on Hossim Awa. First of all, what I wanted to find out about him is how has he ended up at Leon? Is he has he always been at Leon or? Yeah, I mean, I think I think first of all that that point you make there is really important. Like, is it the right fit? It's a it's a question that perhaps clubs should ask themselves more often. And obviously, get to talk about that with our. But it's a really, I think it's a really important point that's missed quite a lot of the time. But yeah, for for our, um, yeah, he's a, a Leon uh, youth uh, graduate. He's actually a boyhood fan. Um, born and raised in Leon, came through the ranks uh, of their very prolific academy. Um, you know, you look at look players like Alex Lacazette, who's obviously at Arsenal now, and Abel Fakir. Uh, Quarantan Taliso all came through very similar paths. Maxwell's Kakare, who's another player that's breaking through at the moment that people would have seen mm. watching those games in the Champions League. You know, they're, they're, that Leon Academy is, especially in recent years, has been extremely good at producing and developing young talent. Um, and and, and the, John Scholes has done well at selling it on. So uh, ours, for me, for those players, perhaps one of the most exciting of those of ta of those sort of talents that's come through. But yeah, he's a, he's a Leon born and raised, I, I think it's probably the, the, the best way. He's never been out on loan. Uh, and uh, and broke through as a teenager at, at Lyon a couple of seasons ago now, and has become a sort of uh, creative fulcrum. Yeah, and, you know, very highly rated over there for Lyon. We saw the sort of, you know, major role he played for Lyon in their excellent run. Of course, they beat Man City. They had a great run in the Champions League. Um, now, I want to find out, was that a one-off? from him or is he a consistent player does he consistently perform in the way in which we saw in the champions league yeah i think i think that's i think it's, it's how you define consistency to some extent he, he certainly is uh in terms of quality of performance yes he's very consistent in, in league and um stats wise he's fluctuated a little bit over the last couple of seasons in terms of goals and assists but he certainly He's not one of those players that will, will necessarily disappear from games. My my issue with him is, which we'll probably get onto later, is does he go the other way? Does he have does he win matches? Uh, and which is a uh, something that we can discuss at Chief Fan on, on other podcasts and, and and things. Whether he's he's capable of of assuming responsibility is perhaps something that um, we would be looking at. But yeah, he's certainly a consistent player. Extremely graceful. He's uh, technically gifted in midfield. Brilliant range of passing. Skips past players with ease. Um, and the way he sort of floats around the pitch in midfield is is, is something to watch. And for me, he's he's the most talented, if you exclude Kylian Mbappe, of players under under twenty one in in league at the moment. And, and if if I was going to sign, if I was looking for the best player, maybe not necessarily because I say you know how important it is that um, clubs find the right fit. But if I was looking for for the, the, the best talent, the best player, I think that's that's him outside Mbappe of this sort of age group. Wow. So that's highly that's high ratings just outside Mbappe. Well, maybe if I if I'm, if we're if we're sort of talking, you know, 22, 23 and under of of developing players in France, Kylian Mbappe again probably isn't class of developing, seeing he's won and scored in a World Cup final. But mm -hmm. you know, if 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 we're talking about that age bracket and and quality of player, I think yes, um, 
I see. This is where I'm going with this. He's very similar to Andres Iniesta. Uh, our R is um, our is probably the best in terms of quality. Wow. So high praise indeed. So, so, so no, you you just sort of touched a bit there on his some of his strengths. So passing is that is that a strength of his? You'd say. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think he's he's a type of player that will that will be for me. Anyway, there's, this is a really interesting debate in terms of what his possessed position is, which we'll probably get onto later. But um, for, for me, a yeah, passing fantastic, brilliant range of passing. He's he's best as sort of a, a, the player that perhaps um, assists the assist, if you like, for rather than necessarily a number ten. From from my point of view, although he has played in that position, has played wider on the left. Um, his first touch is brilliant. It's the way he sort of receives the ball. You know, he's he's that's perhaps something the most striking about the when you watch him play. That he's, he's so aware of his surroundings and, and, and receives the ball fantastically well, and and often beats players with a first touch. Um, and sort of in a deeper in the midfield position, sort of you know, with the game in front of him a little bit more rather than in and around the box, but will sort of progress play in in that kind of way. So receives the ball fantastically well, beat a man, and, and sort of glide into midfield into that into that space that's normally occupied by a number ten. So um, yeah. Passing, fantastic, technically brilliant, um, graceful on the ball, um, brilliant first touch. So yeah, he's got a lot, a lot of. Uh, in terms of watching him, he's got you know he's got a lot of things to offer. Mm. Um, you you say you you touched on that best position for him because I, I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, does Mikel Arteta want him because he wants him to sort of play in that number ten? position you know what i mean i saw a lot of people have been looking on it saying that you know he'd be like a sort of a almost like a new urzil sort of you know um yeah. a modern day a modern day urzil you could say um but you're seeming to suggest that that's not really his position well it's, it's i think it's one of the positions he could play and it's an ongoing debate uh at gffn and and in france generally as to what his best position is because he's been used in quite a few um so Leon have, have, have fluctuated in formation, as you saw in the Champions League at the, in August. They played with, a, with three at the back and with wing backs, which worked really well. Um, you know, set up to, to beat those sort of teams that are stronger, perhaps, that you know can counter attack and, and score goals. And there were sort of two holding midfielders, as Gim, well, and central midfielders, Gimaraes and Kakre. And Awa was the number ten in that system with two strikers, which was Depay and Dembele or Toko Akambi. Um, but in the past, Leon have played a, a, a myriad of formations and he's been used as, as sort of the most forward thinking of a, mid, a sort of a flat midfield three in a more classic 4-3-3. He's been used as a number 10 in a 4-2-3-1 and in that three at the back system. And he's been used wide on the left on occasion as well as sort of drifting in from that from that flank. Um, and whether, you know, you, Arsenal could theoretically use him in any of those positions and they would, you know, he's played well in all of those positions. But for me, his his best position is that sort of Andres Iniesta position. That's, and I think there's a lot of similarities between the two players. Obviously, comparing to for, for me, he's one of the greatest players of all time. Is is it's sort of a stretch? You know, he's got a long way to go. But in terms of skill set, there is there is some parallels there, and the way they sort of mm. drape, sort of gracefully move around in field and drift past people. So for me, if you're if Arsenal are going to play, I know that they didn't against Fulham. It was a three at the back against Fulham, if I'm if I'm mm. if I remember correctly. Um, that that might limit his, you know, if they're going to continue with that system under Arteta, that might limit a little bit where he plays. If you're going to play with, with Aubameyang and Lacazette and Pepe, you know, does he does he come in ahead of one of those players? Does he play in the midfield too? I, I wouldn't see him at wing back, obviously. Um, so for me, if Arsenal switched to a four three three and he's as a flat four three three and he played as the, the most forward thinking midfielder, that's for me where you get the best out of him because you get that progression of play in midfield, you get that receiving of the ball, beating the man and 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 progressing the play into that midfield area. You could play him as number ten or four two three one, but for, for me, you you lose a little bit of that. His passing is still very good at picking passes around the area, but he's one of those. So it sort of instigates a move and 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 dictates or dictates is the word I'm a little bit want to shy away from because there's there's we'll get onto it but there's there's sort of perhaps caveats there but the, the, we sort of characterises the way in which a team sort of develops their their play and rather than picking that ultimate pass which is not he's still good at but perhaps isn't his best sort of skill set obviously you can do that drifting in from the left in a in a, in a probably in a four two three one four three three and outright four three is probably a bit too far forward on that left hand side if he was to play there he's not a winger per se so um that might be might be a position that they use him less on but then my my a, a good a good a friend of mine and colleague at chief fan eric devin who writes with me for the guardian he, he really likes him. he's a leon fan and he really likes him on that left hand side he thinks he can offer quite a lot from there but for me you, you lose a lot of what he's he's best at if you're playing too far forward okay um goals 
does he score goals? Because that's one of been one of the problems with Arsenal's midfield is that we don't score enough goals from midfield. Yeah, I mean, I think if if you're looking to sign, uh, if Arsenal are looking to sign a player like Awa, I think that's a player, an area of development for him for sure. That in terms of his goals and assists output, but then of course that depends on on how and where you use him. If you play him further forward, he can finish. He's a, he's, he's a he's a he's a perfectly solid finisher and and can create very ably and very well around around the, around the penalty area and create assists if, you, if he's given opportunity. But if you're looking for a goal scoring midfielder, they're, they're arguably you know better and more reliable and more sort of obvious options to, to fulfill that role because he's, he's, he's more of, a, of a, an instigator of moves and, and attacks and of, and of play. Last season, his, his sort of goals and assists was actually, was actually a little bit down on previous years. Obviously, he only played 25 games because obviously the, the season was ended early in France. But in the mm. league, he only got three goals and three assists. Whereas the previous two seasons, he was up to, I can't the top of my head, but like seven, seven or eight assists and goals each in the previous couple of league seasons, that is. Um, one thing that Arsenal fans perhaps will be happy to hear, as you said, he was brilliant in those Champions League games. And that's something that does stand out. He does perform well and, and get goals in, in those, or at least contribute quite noticeably in the bigger games. So obviously taking a step to the Premier League is obviously on average ability level of perform of players and, and of club teams. You know, that's that's a positive because those bigger league and encounters and European games, that's where some of his best performances have come. So um, I think that's 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 definitely a positive. But as a goal scorer, he's he's not the number 10, the archetypal number 10 who scores, scores sort of 15 goals a season at the moment. Could develop into that, but whether whether he will is is, is, mm. is open to debate. The other thing I want to ask is obviously nowadays, and especially Mikel Arteta demands it, I think that's why we don't see a lot of Ozil playing, is work. Work mm. rate, pressing, that work you do when you don't have the ball, which is, you know, it used to be old number 10 or whatever, they could just lose the ball <laughs> and say, right, leave it up to yeah. your holding midfielders, midfielders, you lot deal with it. Arteta, he wants everybody. He's got a Bamiang tracking back on that now what's his work rate like it's good i think i think there are two there are two sort of uh sort of points to a number of that first of all leon aren't necessarily the team in recent times that have pressed extensively and um that i i in in those in those sorts of games um so you know there's not something that he necessarily does too much of but i think there's a really good example of last week um, you, you, he was he was sent off actually in his last in the last game Leon played on mm. Tuesday against Montpellier, which they lost uh, lost two one, and he was sent off by perhaps over pressing. You know, he, he charges down a ball on the byline that um, that perhaps didn't need it to be, and goes over the ball and, and studs up on 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 um, the, the Montpellier defender's sort of shin, not maliciously in the slightest, completely accidental. But obviously on the replays, it looks bad, and VR sent him off. So you know, that's he's he's I wouldn't describe him as too mobile per se, but I think there are, there are, there's the main caveat here is, is Arteta. You know, you say he's got Aubameyang sort of tracking back and, and, and providing defensive cover. For, for, for me, we talked about it with Gabriel as well. You know, I said he needed that, that bigger brother figure. Perhaps Arteta is that bigger brother figure for him. And, and maybe mm. that's the case with Awa. It, it's, it's not necessarily the player's attitude. Obviously, that's important. But it's it's what the coach can get out of that player, and what that that coach can inspire in that player, and what he can convince him to do. So he's not one of those midfielders that you say he, he presses all the time. He's capable of doing it, and with the right with the right coaching and the, and the right sort of persuasion from Arteta and the right role model, he absolutely could become that that sort of player. And his weaknesses. <laughs> this is this is something that um, perhaps uh, is. It is is a big caveat to his move to to Arsenal, but again, Arteta, I think, is a fact here. For for me, as good as he is, I've said a lot about how how technically gifted he is and how capable he is, and and how graceful he is, and what a brilliant watch he is. He's seen as that player, why in a more wider context, that should be cr the creative fulcrum for a, you know he's capable of being creative fulcrum for a, for a massive club for for like Arsenal, like you know that sort of elite level club ability wise but for me one of the things that that stands out about him in terms of a negative sense is that he he's quite nice like he, he's sort of almost too nice even shy and in although he he affects games he doesn't really dominate them and from a player of his ability and his position 
playing for a club like Arsenal or, or equivalent, you know, in terms of size and stature, you want that player with that ability in that position to, to dictate games and dominate games and to say, you know, have the arrogance to say, this is my team, I'm, I'm going to lead and I'm going to create and, and it's, I'm going to take responsibility for, for, this, for this game, for, this, for my performance and for, for, for our progression as a, as a team and even as a club, because he's honestly that good ability wise. But I rarely, that's quite a rare thing for him, for even at Leon in a, in a league that's obviously not as high, high standards as the Premier League. He doesn't necessarily dictate in a, in a commanding way that you, you'd like him to. Um, so f- f- that's the main caveat I would add to this. That's why I kind of say, you know, he's a, in terms of watching him, in terms of quality, he's absolutely brilliant. But does he have the presence to, to lead a Premier League top six club? And, and that's the, the main main sort of caveat to this, this move if it goes through. Mm. Let me just um, finally ask, would it, in your opinion, be a good signing for Arsenal? Um, yeah, I think... Sign I- a yeah, yeah, I think our would be, I think a good sign for pretty much anyone. But um, is it the right fit? Um, mm. Ability wise, you'd have to say, you know, passing up on a change for, for the 40 million that's been mentioned. Um, we at GFN, there was a, we, 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 we were tweeting about the, the, the reports on, um, on French television that uh, Arsenal are going to make a, a 40 million pound bid. Leon wants 60, supposedly, they've said in the past. Um, but um, it, it's, it comes down to, you know, that ability is obviously there. It comes down to, is it a good fit? And where does he fit into the team? And does he have the right sort of environment to progress? Because he's obviously got that talent. And I would argue that Arteta, uh, obviously he's still young in his managerial career, but he's shown that he's he he has that sort of sort of almost indefinable ability to to sort of understand players. And 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 to, to uh, he, he comes across as a, as a brilliant coach and and, and you get the sense that he he understands what his players need, and I think that would be really key for our. Because I mentioned he's he's almost shy at times. He, you know, he'd need that push from a manager that that understands him or could understand him to sort of push him on. So I think he'd be in the right environment. I think style wise, he absolutely fits Arsenal, um, especially historically. You know, the the Arsenal way, as it were. Um, looking back over the previous decades, one hundred percent that that makes sense. Um, does he fit into the team? And, and I would say that depends quite a lot on, on how Arteta uses him. Um, if, if you stick with the 3-4-3 the, the three, three or the 3 at the back system, there might whether that works is, is questionable. I don't see him as that he could play in the midfield too. But again, that we also mentioned not necessarily a lack of mobility, but not an overt sense of mobility. When you've got those two players in, in that midfield with the wing backs and, and three forwards, you need players that are going to cover a lot of ground in that midfield. Which is why I think El Nenny and, and, and Zaka started mm. in the midfield against Fulham, right? Two two mm. players that hopefully, you know, more defensively minded players who are gonna who are gonna protect their back four a little bit more, you know, that you need those two players in it. So I don't think he'd be the great bit there. But if you play a flat four three three and he's the fourth most forward thinking of a three, then absolutely. Uh, the only thing as 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 I said, does he have the the presence and arrogance to step up and say in that position to say this is my team and and, and to dominate games because he, he's consistently very very good but someone manages to be relatively not under the radar but sort of a, a cog if you like in, in in a very in a very good team rather than the leader of a very good team. Okay, well listen, thank you very much. I mean, you've really enlightened me. You've really uh, given me a sort of um, good insight into Awa. I'm hoping that we can get this deal done. I think it would be a great deal for Arsenal. It sounds like, uh, as well, especially when you consider his age, still a very young player. Um, like you said, he's he's not the finished article yet. Still a lot to learn. But under Mikel Arteta, who was a midfielder himself with a lot of ability, a lot of skills and talent, I really do think that um, it would be a great fit if we can get it done. I mean, do you do you feel, what's your feeling? Is your feeling that we will get this done? Uh, uh, based over what you see happening in France, I think it's. I think there's a long way to go. Um, I, I, I think it's. It's. I think it's the right move for him too. So hopefully there'll be a willingness from his point of view. Um, uh, Lequeep reported recently that he, you know, he wants to move. Um, obviously there are a lot of interested parties. Pep Guardiola has said he's a he's a fan in the past, which makes sense um, because you know that he would fit mm. right into that sort of system too. Uh, Juventus have been interested. I don't. I don't like that move for him at all. I think that's. that's although with, with Andrea Pirlo there, you know, maybe there's a mm. there's a, there's a change in, in philosophy there. But yeah, I, I think it's there's a lot, to, a long way to go. But um, it's it's certainly looking very possible. 
Okay. Well, thank you very much, Adam, um, once again. And uh, thanks for insight. And of course, you can check out Adam um, on Get French Football News. Um, he does some excellent uh, articles and gives some excellent insight into everything to do with uh, French football. And they have got some brilliant players over there. As we know, nobody is. We, we, we're we always getting them at Arsenal. Yeah. Thank you very much. No problem. Thanks for having me on. No. This isn't a robbery at the end of the video. We are telling you about these brand new masks from Mask SC in football-inspired colours. You can get your team on it. The link is in the description. Get on it right now.